All right, guys, as we get ready to help these seventh graders and sixth graders who have missed some time make up their assignment, let me walk you through exactly what you're going to do. This video is not for the students. This video is for you so you can understand the expectation that their teachers have for them and make this time helpful for them. So please watch it before you teach. Take any notes that you need and don't feel confident about and then go ahead and teach it. Uh, live and in person and let the students, the students can work on the, the computer while you teach. Okay, here we go. So you're going to come in. The first thing you can have them do is instead of reading the text, when we do prove, we're going to have them go to the questions first. That helps them because they know what they're reading for. So have them go into the first question. So what's the first thing you're looking for? Which of the following best fits the overall main idea of the speech? So we P preview the question we look at the main words that they need in the question. So they need to know that it's the main idea of the overall speech. So they need to read the whole thing. And a lot of times they get questions about one paragraph or whatever, but in this case, the main idea of the overall speech, you know what you're reading for. Now that you know what you're reading for in the first question, go on back. Since you know it's whole text, let's read the whole thing. Don't forget to have them look at the title. It's about the working man. Who wrote it? Barack Obama made this speech. When did he make it? Then go through and read the speech as a class. Once they've done that, come back. Which of the following best fits the overall main idea of the speech? It's going to be B. Obama, Obama will help, will fight to help the working man. Once they've picked that, they're going to come down here and they're going to prove their answer. So here we want them actually typing a sentence that proves their answer by verifying quoting text evidence and explaining how the quote proves. So when we ask for the verify, that's the V in prove, and the E explains. So verify is an actual quote, and then uh, explain is using their own words. So we're going to go back, and if you read the speech, we're going to notice a couple of things. First of all, the title of the speech gives it away. So you get support from the title. But second of all, look at this sentence right here. Sentence, first sentence in paragraph two, it's time we had a president who will stand up for working men and women. They can use other evidence, but that's the main evidence. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say a full sentence and please make them write it out. Um, I know that the main idea of the speech is that, is that Obama will help the help will fight to help the working man because paragraph two says, comma quotes, it's time we had a president who will stand up for working men and women. This proves that he's talking about fighting for the working men and women. They've verified it with an actual quote and they've explained their quote. So they need to answer it. Now listen, do this as a whole class. They don't have to sit there quietly and do it together. Have them fight over which answer is correct. Do something fun. You may want to have some candy and let them play four, four corners. Everybody who thinks it's B, everybody thinks it's C, everybody thinks it's D. And then let the bees celebrate that they got it right and have them work together. These are kids who have not been here to do this process. So the more you do it with them, the more it's going to help them. So let's move to the next one. Read the following quote. Joe Biden, a man whose heart and values are rooted firmly in the middle class. Based on the quotation above, we can conclude Obama is trying to say. They don't need to go back to the passage. They don't need to look at anything else. All they care about is interpreting what's inside of those parentheses. So what do we need to do? Joe Biden, a man whose heart and values are rooted firmly in the middle class. So we need to, to look at and omit the answers that are wrong. Does this have anything to do with money? No, there's no evidence. We are only looking at just what's given us and what we're given in the quotes. There's no evidence that it's talking about money. Could it be that he relates to the common man? Well, they talk about how his values are rooted in the middle class. Okay, so does the middle class have anything to do with com the common man? Okay, Biden has strong values. Okay, so, and, by, and the third one is Biden is in the middle class. So let's talk about the offs. We know that the correct answer is B. So if I'm teaching this, and I'm, gonna I'm about to change this question number four right here, because I, I see a better way to do this now that I'm talking through it. If we know that the answer is B, we know that the obvious wrong is A. Obviously, this has nothing to do with money, but they're going to get confused. Why? Because this says outright, Joe Biden has values. It says, Joe Biden, a man whose values... They're going to want to pick C, especially low readers, because that's the explicit evidence, okay? Biden is in the middle class. It says, rooted firmly in the middle class. A man whose heart and values are rooted firmly in the middle class. Again, low readers. 
Look at explicit evidence and see in the middle class, they're going to want to pick D. It's because the evidence is implicit. It's not outright. It's what's hidden inside of it. We know as good readers that when it says a man ha who has values rooted in the middle class, it means he's not there anymore. It's where he came from. They don't know that. That's why they're low readers. They don't see the hidden meaning behind. That's why our kids struggle with inference. So you need to help them understand that the correct answer is B because of this phrase are rooted in, rooted in the middle class. They're going to want to pick C and D. The correct answer is B. So I'm going to change this one right here. Number four, instead of explaining, I'm about to change it to now prove your answer by omitting the, the answers that are wrong. And they're need, going to need to come down here and explain why C and D, why A, C, and D are wrong. A is an obvious wrong, but why are C and D wrong? Have that conversation with the class, okay? I'll get that changed. Number five, the word tirelessly in paragraph one means tirelessly. Work very hard to never get tired. Continue on and on to give up when tired. Notice here, again, low readers, a lot of these offs have tricks in them. So let's go back and read tirelessly within the sentence. So first of all, you need to help them find their text evidence. So paragraph and tear it right here. And the American labor movement that has fought tirelessly to improve their wages, benefits, and working conditions. So here we go. Here's how this gets hard. There isn't a clue in that sentence, and that's all they want to look at. Okay. What the clue comes before. We honor the hardworking men and women who have made this country what it is and the labor movement that has fought tirelessly to improve their wages, benefits. So the connection here is they're comparing the movement to the hardworking men and women it represents. So they're looking for their text evidence outside of the sentence that it's in. So the thing that we teach is look at the sentence and if you don't see that evidence, then you need to look at the sentence before and the sentence after. A lot of times in eighth grade, this goes even further. But today it's in the sentence before. So they're comparing the American labor movement to hardworking men and women. All right. So we come down here then and say, okay, so if it has to do with hard work, they work very hard. So does it mean they never get tired? Because the word itself means, if I just look at the word, tireless. Okay. I pulled it apart. It should mean to never get tired. That's not it. It's about the context clue. To continue on and on. Okay. Yes, it does. Or to give up when tired. Well, we know it's not D. D's the obvious wrong. So which one's better? Work very hard or to continue on and on because in, in the sentence itself, either one could work. So, so let me help, help you see what the test is doing. Okay. Look at how they're trying to trap low readers. First of all, they give you the definition if they just break down the word. If you just break down the word tireless, that's the definition that's going to be correct. Second of all, here's the next trick. Okay, so what you do is you go back in the paragraph and you see if it works. If you put the phrase work very hard in the place of tirelessly, does the sentence make sense? And the American labor movement that has worked very hard to improve their wages. Yep, it makes sense. Okay, let's try continue on and on. And the American labor movement that continued on and on to improve their wages. Yep, it makes sense. Okay, so now you've taken away the trick that they used to use in elementary school. The only one that doesn't work is to give up with tired. We figured out why this isn't off, even though it's a trick. Now they got to pick between work very hard and continue on and on. Both right answers, technically. But the one that's better is A, work very hard. Why? Because the actual context clue that's in the sentence before the sentence they're reading is hardworking men and women. So in the context of this passage, work very hard fits in the context better than continue on and on. So it's not a right and wrong answer, it's a better and best answer. Please talk them through it and help them see the tricks. Number six, write a paragraph explaining the theme of this speech. Make sure to support your answer with evidence from the text. Okay, so here's where we use race. So they're going to R, restate the question, A, answer it, C, cite evidence, so that's going to be quoting from the text, and E, explain how the quote supports their answer. So first, I'm going to start with just the question, okay? Write a paragraph, explain the theme of this speech. The theme of this speech is, see how they're restating the question? 
Okay, so the theme of this speech is, now let's answer it. We're going to do the A. So we go back, we read the whole speech. And what we're going to get is something similar to the main idea, but that uh, the theme is the lesson we're supposed to learn from it. So if they miss that, remember that the theme is the message, the message of the speech. The message of the speech is that Obama and McCain care about the working man and are going to try to help middle class people have a better life. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to all restate the question. The theme of this speech is, and I'm going to answer it, that Barack Obama and Joe Biden are politicians who care about, understand, and want to help middle class people do better. Now, what's my evidence? Now, I'm going to have to make him go back and cite actual evidence. So let's have a race and figure out what evidence we need. Okay, so there we go. We already know it's time for we had a president who will stand up for the working men and women could be evidence by building an economy that's not just wealth, but working workers who created it. Um, we could use this. It's time you had a partner in the White House who knows the struggles facing working families uh, and that hardworking families need immediate relief. That's why as president, I'll, and he starts to say what he does. So if I was doing this, I would use that second sentence that they're, I would use, get them to quote, it's time you had a partner in the White House who knows the struggles facing working families and that hardworking families need immediate relief. They don't need to do the whole thing. They need to pick out the parts that most matter. I would put those quotations in my paper. So I've now said, or restate the question, the theme of this speech is A, that Barack Obama and Joe Biden understand middle-class people and wanna to work together to help them. I know this because the speech says, then quote those two quotes. When he says this, Barack Obama is trying to convince Americans, and now you're explaining the quote, is trying to convince Americans that not only do they think, uh, get that the middle class is, is, is hurting, but that those folks need people in the White House who are going to help them. So it's going to be a three or four sentence paragraph they need to do each step. Same thing down here. We're going to do that exact same process. The author's purpose for writing the speech is to convince voters, right? To convince voters to vote for him. How do we know this? Because you, because it says things like, you need somebody in the White House. It's time we had a president. He wants you to vote for him. I've spent my career fighting for working men, men and women. Um, with him by my side, I'm confident that we can make take this country in a new direction. Okay? So he wants, right here, that's why as president, anything that's showing that he's trying to get them to vote for him as president. So that's going to be my evidence, and I'm going to explain how that evidence shows. So the, here we go, restate the question. The author's purpose, sorry, the author's purpose for writing this speech is to convince Americans to vote for Joe Biden and Barack Obama, okay? So there's your R, restate the question, there's your A answer, then pick out a couple of sentences to cite or sections of sentences to cite and explain how those sentences back it up. Best summary of the speech. So you look here, Barack Obama gave a speech on Labor Day to address the failures of our current, okay, it's hard. I'm having trouble seeing all this, guys, sorry. So you should be able to see the whole thing. Okay, I'll tell you what, since I'm having trouble with this one, I'm going to delete it right now. There you go. Don't have that one anymore to worry about. Now, preview your answer. Okay, we're going to delete that one too. You guys have got enough to talk about anyway. Okay. All right, here we go. Which sentence from the speech is an example of how Obama is promising to help a majority of Americans? Okay, here's the trick in this question. We don't need to look at anything else. If they look outside of these sentences from the text, they're going to have other stuff that's true, but not here. So we're only looking at these sentences. We're not looking back at the text, okay? And we need one that look, look carefully at the question. Obama is promising to help majority. There's our word. Senator McCain is proposing $4 billion in new tax breaks for oil companies. Nope. Why is that not correct? Because it's not about Senator McCain. This is about Obama. Obama will put a $1,000 tax pocket cut into the pockets of 95% of workers and their families. Is it about Obama? Yes. Is it about a majority? 95%? That's a majority. 
Obama will end tax breaks for companies that ships jobs overseas. Is that about Obama? Yes. Is that about a majority? Nope. That's about a companies. We can't afford four more years of the failed George Bush economic policies. Is that about Obama? Nope. It's about George Bush. So you can do this one very carefully. This is one that you can teach them how to do, especially kids that struggle on the test without having to go all the way back. They know their keywords. Their keywords are Obama and he's trying to convince a majority. So what's the only answer that checks both boxes? It's got to be B. Walk them through the checks. Okay. Based on this speech, the reader can conclude that Obama will make changes to help the American people. Here's the trick on this one. It's the only one you can prove from the evidence in the speech. It doesn't say anything about this. It talks about cutting taxes. It doesn't talk about cutting all taxes. That It doesn't have any proof for always make the right choice. So the only thing that we can find proof for is make changes to help the American people. Okay, same thing here. They're gonna find a quote above. So when they prove by verifying, again, that's a quoted text. So what is a quote that shows that Barack will make changes to help the American people? All they have to do is write the quote here. Number nine, here's the problem with this one. Stand has more than one definitions, so they can't just look it up. So they gotta find that context clue. So in paragraph four, what does stand mean? It's a multi, it's a multi pair, a multi definition word. I spent my entire career fighting for working minimum. And so is my running mate, Joe Biden, a man whose heart and values are rooted firmly in the middle class. With him by my side, I am confident so we can take this country in a new direction and restore that, restore that fair shot at your dreams. That is the core of what Joe Biden and I stand for and what America stands for. So in that case, we're not talking about standing up. So it's not A. We're not uh, to take a specific position, to hold a course at C, nothing about C, to occupy a place or location, not about a place or location. So it's got to be B, it's about a position, okay? I'm going to look at, I'm checking real quick. Yeah. So just make sure they're reading. The key here is they need to read through the whole answer of each one, because this to hold a course is going to sound right unless they read the words at C. So make sure they read the whole thing and then notice that they're, they're talking about a position, what they believe in, what America is supposed to believe in. And what idea does Obama emphasize throughout the speech? He will make a good president by helping the working men. It's got to be D. Why? It's the only one that has evidence. So just keep pushing. Can, do you have enough evidence? 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 Okay, you got the you've got the the te the things to teach. You've got the the clues on all this, the little tricks. Now it's up to you to make this fun. You got a classroom full of kids who haven't shown up all year. This is something that will actually help them. I highly suggest you get some candy. I highly suggest you decide so a way to do this in games and competitions. Let them take a chance to try to convince them of each other's. Do not stick them on a computer and just have them sit there. It doesn't help them. Walk them through. Teach them the tricks that I just taught you. You actually have a chance to make a difference in how they test, okay? And testing is not everything, but these kids need a boost because they haven't thought that way most of the year. All right, thank you for what you're doing on Monday. I hope you guys have a good time. Um, and if you have a question before Monday, you're welcome to email me that question for clarification. Uh, Monday, I will probably not have my computer on. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.